In this tutorial, we're going to look at creating a web page. All we're going to be doing is creating division areas like header, sidebar, content, and footer. And then we'll be applying a style sheet to control the appearance. But I'm going to start with a blank HTML document, create the CSS, and I'll be using Visual Studio Code. So the first thing I'm going to do is open a folder. And what I'm going to do on my Mac is actually trust the folder that I've opened. And the folder is called L Marsden. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a file. This one's going to be called my index.html. If you're wondering how to use Visual Studio Code, have a look at my YouTube channel. There's some tutorials on that. Also how to put extensions in, like how to get this icon to appear. The next thing I'm going to do is just click on the file here. Remember, these are my open edits at the moment. These are the files that are currently open. So there's a welcome open. If I close this, that will disappear. I want to create a new file in El Marsden folder. This is going to be called styles or style.css. Now you notice this once again, I've got a CSS symbol here and press on enter. So these are the two files we're going to have. In here is going to be my style sheet. So I'm going to put a forward slash star for a style sheet. This allows me to put a comment in and this is going to be the CSS. And I'm just going to put developer and then you can put your name after this. And then you finish it with a star forward slash. So therefore there's a comment within this to save. Notice the dot means it's unsafe. Click command S. Now I'm going back to my HTML. I'm just going to click on the paper icons up here to show close the files down. And I'm just going to move this to the left. And I'm just going to bring my preview to the right of my page. So first of all, I need to create a boilerplate for my document. I'm going to use Emmet to help me. So I'm just going to go shift exclamation mark and press enter. And then I'm going to save that. So it's done the boilerplate for me. I need to put a document heading in. So I'm just going to put www.lmarsden. This will appear in the little tab at the top. And I want to link to my CSS sheet, which is called styles. So to do that, I'm just going to use the link command and use Emmet to help me. So I'm going to go LIN and you see how it's come up with link and Emmett's got a CSS one here. So I'm just going to click on that. You notice that the file is called style.css and the reason for that is Emmett puts that as the default link as well. So you can follow the link, but I'm just going to leave that like that and save that. So I've just linked my style sheet to my HTML. Now I can go back and start work on my HTML. So what I need to do is actually uh, create a container. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a div because the example doesn't actually have a container around the whole object and therefore um, it can be a little hard to manage with big screens etc so it's a good idea to put it all in a container so I'm going to put a div and then I'm going to have an ID and that's going to be equal to container now you can have single quotes or double quotes it's completely up to you I'm also not going to have any text within this so the other divs will sit inside this so the next one is I need a header so once again I'm going to open up a div tag I'm going to give it an ID and that one's going to be equal to header and I'm going to close the div tag here and this time I'm just going to put some text in because it helps you manage the page when you're working with your CSS and before you've got content so this is the header Okay, the next one is the sidebar. So when we look at the diagram, I need sidebar, then content, then footer. So we're going to create this a few times. So once again, div. As you can tell, I've used lowercase for all the naming conventions. And this is a good habit to get into when working with HTML. Now I need to check this page. I'm just going to save this now and I'm going to open this from the folder. So I'm just going to go to where I save my work, which is El Marsden. And then I'm just going to right mouse click the file and then I'm going to open with Chrome. So you've seen I've navigated, just right mouse click and go on open with and I just open with Chrome and this is the and it's got all the different sections so so far the page is working I'm not going to close this browser because I'm going to go back to it and I can refresh every time I make an adjustment the next thing we need to do is actually start applying the styles so we're just going to click across the styles 
Now, one of the first ones we're going to have a look at is actually working with our container. So in our HTML, we have container. Sometimes what you should do is just copy them so you don't get spelling mistakes. And when we want to access a div tag, we need to use the hash symbol. So hash and then container. Then we open with a curly brace and we close with a curly brace. We can also set a width of the page. And if we have a look at our little matrix, we can see that the width of the page is 960 pixels. So let's set the container to 960. And we put PX on the end because you've got to specify the units that you're using. And then we use a semicolon to end that command. The next thing we're going to do is actually add a color to this. So we're going to add a background DG color. And we're going to give it a color that we can see. And if you scroll down, you'll see one called white smoke. This one's good because it's just off white and easy to see. And it contrasts against the white background. Let's save this. Now I'm not going to do anything more. I want to head back to my browser now and I want to refresh the page. You notice that not much has happened except for we can now see the gray bar going across and it doesn't go the full width of the screen. That's because out to here is 960 pixels. You can also see the difference between the background of the actual web page document and the container color, which we've told it to be that smoke white. Now we can also float that into the middle of the page. So I'm just going to put it there and put margin and I'm going to give it some commands. I'm going to give it a zero, an auto and a zero. So there should be no margin at the top of the page or the bottom of the page, but the left and right should be auto. And when I save this and refresh the page, it should float this content into the middle of the screen. So refresh, you can now see that box, the container, the 960 pixels floated in the middle. And then if I stretch the screen out, it stays in the middle, or if I make it smaller, it adjusts to have the margin on the left and the right. Okay, let's move back to our CSS and start adding some more commands. We know we've got a header. Once again, to talk to the header section, we need to use a hashtag in a div tag. What I'm talking about, just to remind you, see the header here, we've given it an ID. So if I want to talk to a div ID and use its name, I need to reference it with a hash symbol. And this one's going to be header. Now we were told that the header is going to have a height of 200 pixels. Height 200. And remember to put the PX on the end. Also, ensure that you've got the semicolon at the end of every line. Because if you don't, it will break your CSS, which means your page won't load. I've got a width and that that has a width that's been specified as 960. And once again, it's going to be pixels. And it's going to have a background color. Now, background color can be a set color. We can also use RGB. And we can use RGBA. My preference is RGBA. So you can actually go through and adjust all these sort of settings so if you want a sort of a pinky color you can set those sort of ones out um, otherwise to keep it simple you can just use a hash color so i'm just going to delete this out because it's fairly long and we could actually use a hash color as specified by our commands so it's hash ffcc99 and you can see that it's an orangey sort of color my preference is to use RGB or RGBA, but you can use the web to look up websites that will give you the color and also the hexadecimal color to make your life a lot easier. So let's just save this now and go check our web page. Now, when I refresh this, we should see that the header now has had the color applied and also the width and the height. So let's go finish off applying all the other styles.
Okay, I've applied the, all the rest of the CSS and you can see that we've got the height, width, background colors. So let's have a look at this, save it, go back to the web page and let's refresh the page. You'll notice that we've got a stacking element happening. We've got the header, we've got the sidebar, we've got the content and we have the footer. But what we need is the content next to the sidebar. So what we need to do is float this up next to sidebar. Now to make sidebar move to the left, we need to float it. So what we're going to do is use the command float and we're going to tell it to actually float to the left. So let's have a look at what this command does for us now. So back to the browser, refresh. You can now see that this is content has come up next to sidebar. A good way of thinking about this is think if we took sidebar and lifted it off the page, so we floated it off the page. This then allows the content and the footer to float up the page. So let's also do this to content, but I also want to change content's color because it's still the same color because I copied and pasted header down and I don't like all the orange on the page. So let's go back to the CSS and put the 99ccc in which gives us a different color. And let's float this left. Let's have a look at that. We're gonna refresh the page now. You can see that it's worked. But you can actually see that we've now lost our footer. Our footer isn't where it should be. So to stop that from happening, what we need to do is sort of clear this floating, stop everything from floating up. So to do that, we can actually use what's called clear left. And the clear attributes can take left, right, or both. But because we're using the float left, we want to clear the left. So in the footer, to stop it from causing this issue, we go clear, and we're just going to clear the left. Go back, refresh. You can see now the footer's come back down our page to where it needs to be. We still have a little bit of a problem though. So now what we want to do is give a little bit of spacing around. So we probably want to put a bit of a margin at the bottom of the header just to put a gap in here. We probably want to put a bit of a margin at the bottom here between these two and also one to the right. So we'll do that on sidebar just so there's a bit of a gap so they're not hard up next to each other. So let's implement that. So let's go back in and head up to header and let's just put in a margin bottom. Emmet starts typing for us, which is good. And then we can give it the size. So we're just going to use 10 pixels. Now 10 pixels isn't going to cause us a problem because it's on the bottom and pages will grow with us. But the width, we've got to remember that the page width is 90, uh, 960 pixels. So we don't want the width and a margin to the right to exceed that. So when we're looking at the sidebar here, we have a width of 240 and I would like a right margin here. And I would like that to be 10 pixels. And we need to apply a little bit of maths here because we know that we have 960 wide. This is 240. This one's 710 and they're next to each other. So 240 plus 710 is going to give us 950 plus the right margin here 10 that is 960 and our page is 960 so it's okay so that fits within the size of our container that plus that plus this one all needs to make equal 960 at the most and let's all the margin on the bottom and once again it's going to be 10 pixels and let's save and have a look when I refresh, you'll see this little gap disappear because the margin's going to push the content across. And now we can see the gaps between the header, footer, etc. We'll just make it a little smaller and you can see the full page. So the question is, does this look like our example? Yes, it does. And we've gone through how we can create the divisions, how we can create a cascading style sheet to control the look of the div tags. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, give it a like, thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, have a look around my YouTube channel for other useful programming tutorials.